Hello, curious minds, what if one day, humanity packed its bags, not for Mars, not for the Moon, but for an entirely different star system? Just 4.37 light years away lies Alpha Centauri, our closest stellar neighbor. But how do we even begin to reach a place so far, so alien, so impossible? In today's journey, we're going to explore what it would take to colonize another star system, technology, dangers, and the future of our species among the stars. Buckle up, it's time to go interstellar. Okay, first, why go to Alpha Centauri? Because it's the closest star system to our own, a mere 4.37 light years away. That might sound close, astronomically speaking, but let's put it in perspective. The moon is about one second away at light speed, Mars around three minutes, but Alpha Centauri over four years, even at the speed of light, and we can't travel anywhere near that fast, yet. So why choose it as our first destination? Because Alpha Centauri isn't just one star, it's a trio. Two sun-like stars Alpha Centauri A and B orbit each other, and a third dimmer red dwarf Proxima Centauri lurks nearby, and Proxima might have something incredible, an Earth-sized planet in its habitable zone, a rocky world we call Proxima B. We don't know if it's truly habitable, but it gives us something vital, a target, a reason to go. Right now, our fastest spacecraft, Voyager 1, has been flying for over 45 years, and it's not even 0.06% of the way to Alpha Centauri. At that speed, a trip to Alpha Centauri would take over 75,000 years. If we want to colonize another star system, we'll need to revolutionize space travel, maybe even rethink physics itself. But if we can get there, it might just be humanity's second home. All right, so 75,000 years to get to Alpha Centauri with current tech? That's a hard pass. We're going to need something way faster. First up, nuclear propulsion. This one's not sci-fi. It's been on the drawing board since the 1960s. Instead of burning chemical fuel like rockets today, these ships would use controlled nuclear reactions to push us forward, much faster, much more efficient. How fast are we talking? Maybe 10% the speed of light in theory. That would cut the trip to Alpha Centauri down to around 40 years. Still a long time. But suddenly, it's starting to sound doable. Next, antimatter. When antimatter meets matter it releases a ridiculous amount of energy, like the most efficient explosion possible. With enough antimatter and a way to safely store it, we could hit speeds of maybe 50% of light speed or more. That's less than a decade to Alpha Centauri. Tiny problem though, antimatter is insanely expensive and unstable. We'd need breakthroughs in production, containment, and maybe insurance. Then there's the idea that's actually getting funding right now, laser sails. Picture this, a paperclip-sized probe with a giant reflective sail, pushed by a powerful laser beam from Earth. Breakthrough Starshot wants to do this, and they think they could get to Alpha Centauri in just 20 years, but only for a probe, not humans. Downside, no brakes, it would just fly right past at 20% light speed, blink and you miss it. And then there's the wild stuff. Warp drives, wormholes, bending space itself. The famous Alcubierre drive is a real theory. It says if you compress space in front of a ship and expand it behind, the ship could ride a kind of wave faster than light. Downside, we'd need something called negative energy, which, as far as we know, doesn't exist. Yet. So, we've got some incredible ideas. Some are nearly within reach, some are still deep in the realm of sci-fi. But one thing's clear, if we want to colonize Alpha Centauri, we'll have to become a species of engineers, explorers, and dreamers. Okay, let's say we figured it out. We've built the ship, it's fast, it's powerful, and it's ready to go. Now comes the next big question. What's it like to actually travel to another star? Because this isn't a quick weekend trip to Mars. This is decades, even centuries in space. One idea? The generation ship. A huge vessel where entire families live, work, and die, while their grandkids or great-grandkids are the ones who arrive. Basically, a floating city in space with farms, schools, gravity simulation, everything you'd need to survive for 100 plus years between stars. Downside? It's expensive, complex, and you're raising generations who never even chose this mission. Option 2, cryosleep. Freeze the passengers for the whole trip, then wake them up when they arrive. It's a sci-fi classic, and scientists are actually working on this, kind of. We've done it with frogs and even human organs, but full-body human stasis? Not yet. Downside, if something goes wrong mid-flight, well, good luck fixing anything while frozen. Of course, there's the robotic route. Send probes first, autonomous AI-powered scouts that can prep the system, scan planets, even build infrastructure. Let them take the risks so humans can follow later. No matter how we travel, there's one challenge you can't escape. The human mind. Long voyages mean isolation, limited space, the same people around you all day, every day. It's like living in a submarine, for decades. Mental health, group dynamics, boredom, they're just as important as engines and oxygen. Traveling to Alpha Centauri won't just test our technology, 
It'll test our patience, our psychology, and our ability to adapt to a life between stars. Because once we launch, there's no turning back. After decades or maybe even centuries, we finally made it. We're in the Alpha Centauri system. It's not one star, but three. Alpha Centauri A and B are a binary pair, and way out on the fringe there's a tiny red dwarf, Proxima Centauri. That's where our best shot is. A planet called Proxima B. It's about the size of Earth. It's in the so-called habitable zone, where liquid water could exist. But that's all we really know. Everything else? Total mystery. Is there an atmosphere? What's the gravity like? Magnetic field? Radiation levels? Could we breathe the air? Or would we instantly regret it? First step? Send out drones and landers to map the surface, scan the chemistry, and search for signs of life. And yeah, we'd be looking for life. Even microbial life would be a huge discovery. But it could also mean danger, unknown ecosystems, alien bacteria, or biochemistry we don't understand. This is first contact, maybe not with aliens but with an entirely new world. Meanwhile we'd set up orbiting stations to serve as command hubs, think ISS 2.0, but with more lasers and better coffee. And on the surface? We'd start small, robotic habitats, 3D printed structures, maybe even inflatable modules. After a journey across the stars this is where it really begins. We're not just visiting, we're here to explore, study, and eventually, to stay. So, we've landed, we've scouted the planet, now it's time for the hard part. Building a colony where humans can live, work, and thrive. The first settlers won't be building skyscrapers overnight. We'll start with small, self-contained habitats, probably inflatable modules covered with protective shielding to block radiation. Robots and drones will do a lot of the heavy lifting, assembling structures, mining local materials, and setting up life support systems before the humans even step out. Colonies need air, water, and food to survive. We'll have closed-loop systems recycling everything but the key will be using local resources, like mining ice for water or extracting minerals from the soil. Hydroponic and aeroponic farms will grow fresh food inside the habitat, keeping the colonists healthy and sane. Power is critical. Solar energy will likely be our first go-to, especially if the star's output is stable. In darker areas or for heavier industry, small nuclear reactors might provide steady reliable energy. Proxima B might have different gravity than Earth, maybe less, maybe more, and that'll affect everything from muscle strength to bone density. Colonies might build rotating sections inside habitats to simulate Earth gravity, or spend time training to adjust. Radiation is another big challenge. Without a protective atmosphere like Earth's, the colony will need shielding, either by burying habitats underground or using advanced materials. It's not just about survival. Colonies need communities, schools, medical care, recreation, things that make a place feel like home, and the colony will grow slowly bringing in more settlers from Earth, until one day it becomes a thriving, independent society. Building the first colony on another star system won't be easy, or fast, but it's the first giant leap toward becoming a truly interstellar species, and that first step, it all starts with courage, creativity, and a willingness to build a home among the stars. So you've made it. You're part of the first human community light years from Earth. But what is life like in a brand new star system? Life here won't be like Earth, or even like the International Space Station. Colonists will have routines packed with work, maintaining habitats, growing food, repairing equipment. Exercise will be non-negotiable. Without Earth's gravity your muscles and bones weaken fast. But there will be downtime too, social events, virtual reality hangouts, and maybe even art and music, because humans need creativity to thrive. Long-term space living isn't just physical, it's mental. Isolation, confinement, and distance from Earth can take a toll. That's why mental health support will be vital. Virtual therapists, group activities, and lots of ways to stay connected with loved ones back home. Out here, humanity might evolve in new ways. Different conditions, challenges, and generations born off Earth could create unique cultures. What language will they speak? What holidays will they celebrate? The first colony could be the seed of a whole new human civilization. Exploration won't stop with the colony. Outposts, mining operations, and scientific expeditions will push farther into this alien world. Every new discovery will teach us more about this system, and maybe about life itself. So life in a new star system will be challenging, exciting, and sometimes lonely. But it's also the beginning of something incredible, humans truly becoming a spacefaring species. All right, let's get real for a second. Colonizing Alpha Centauri isn't just about dreams and rockets, it's also packed with risks and a whole lot of unknowns. Space travel is hard, really hard. 
The farther you go, the less room there is for error. A tiny failure, whether it's life support, propulsion, or communication, could spiral into a mission-ending disaster. Cosmic radiation is a silent threat. Without Earth's magnetic field and atmosphere, colonists face increased cancer risks and damage to electronics. Living in tight quarters far from home with limited social circles can cause stress, anxiety, and conflict. How will we handle disagreements, mental health crises, or the pressure of knowing there's no quick rescue? Proxima B and the Alpha Centauri system might hold surprises, intense radiation storms, toxic atmospheres, or unstable geology. We don't fully understand the environment yet, and unexpected hazards could put colonists at risk. What if there's alien life? Even microbes could be dangerous, unknown pathogens or toxic ecosystems. Or what if Earth microbes brought by colonists upset a delicate alien balance? The truth is, the farther we reach, the more we venture into the unknown. But with every risk comes the chance to learn, to adapt, and to survive. Because exploring new worlds means facing the unknown, and daring to take that leap anyway. So why do it? Why spend decades, maybe centuries, building ships, risking lives, and crossing light years, just to touch another star? Because this isn't just about Alpha Centauri, it's about who we are. From the moment we walked upright, we've been explorers. We crossed continents, oceans, space, and now, we dream of stars. Colonizing Alpha Centauri wouldn't just be a milestone, it would be the next chapter in the story of human civilization. Some scientists see it this way. If all of humanity lives on one planet, we're a single asteroid, supervolcano, or nuclear war away from extinction. A second home among the stars, that's insurance for the future of life itself. Living in another star system will change us, culturally, biologically, maybe even spiritually. The people born there will grow up with different skies, different day lengths, different stories. They'll still be human, but in a new way. A broader way. And who knows what else is out there? Are we the only ones trying to reach across the void? Colonizing another system could be our first step toward meeting the galaxy, or proving definitively that it's just us. Colonizing Alpha Centauri is the ultimate expression of human curiosity, courage, and hope. Because when we reach out to other stars, we're not just escaping our past, we're building our future. From nuclear-powered ships to alien suns, the road to Alpha Centauri is long, but maybe not impossible. One day a distant star might be home, but if the chance came, would you leave Earth behind to build a new world among the stars? Let us know in the comments. We want to hear what you think. And if you enjoyed this cosmic journey, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you never miss an episode. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep looking up.